Question number six, the accusatory question. During our media training workshops, I'll often ask a half a dozen who, what, when, where, why questions to a client. And then that seventh question, I'll throw a zinger at them, something that they didn't expect, something that may accuse them of having done something wrong. And it's amazing to watch what usually happens. At the very least, there's some kind of visible change in their facial expression. And in some of the more extreme circumstances, you see people physically push back into their chair, often crossing their arms and their legs, really protecting their bodies from the challenge of the question. And a lot of the time, rather than defending against the accusatory question, I advise that people lean right into it, push back hard against the insinuation buried within the question. I'll give you an example. Let's say you're a city council person or a mayor. You preside over an almost $300 million annual budget. And the reporter from some local station, an intrepid investigation reporter, notices a $5,000 line item in your budget for spending $5,000 in party supplies and catering for a single party. And you know how these things play out. Your local newscast says, next on News 7, an investigation, your tax dollars at work, $5,000 in party supplies. And this sounds like suddenly you as a politician are scandalous, unethical, someone who is mismanaging public funds and should be forced out of office. Now, that may seem like an unusual time for you to push back hard when constituents may be enraged by the setup of that story. But here's how that could play out. Let's say the reporter is in a parking lot and chases you down and, and puts a microphone in your face. The question is, uh, Mr. or Mrs. Council person, why are you asking taxpayers to foot a $5,000 expense for party supplies? Shouldn't that money be spent on crucial programs and services else, elsewhere? So this is one of those cases where you could very easily see somebody sputtering and very anxious. But here's how I'd like to see that person answer the question. $5,000 couldn't possibly be a better investment. What that program you're referring to is, is at-risk youth who formerly went through the program are mentoring at-risk youth in our community today. As a result of this program, people in our community that for too long have been forgotten or left behind have a better chance of completing high school, a better chance of going to college, a better chance of getting high-paying jobs for the rest of their lives. And when you see what happens in that room when we acknowledge the tremendous strides those young people have made, you probably would look at it and say, $5,000 isn't enough. You should be spending more to acknowledge what they did. So that's why we're spending that money. And I would invite members of the community to participate in this program and witness for themselves why this is such a great use of taxpayer funds. You can see in that moment, how the story completely flips, because rather than defending for a second, you instantly grab the accusation and turned it on its head.